What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to remove the bumper cover on this 2008 Honda Accord. This is gonna be pretty straightforward, so let's jump right in. In order to remove the front bumper, we need to disconnect a few things. Let's start with the upper radiator shroud. This plastic piece has eight push clips holding it in place. These aren't difficult to remove, however, they are brittle, so you will probably break a few of them. I'm gonna replace all of them with new ones. So grab your flathead screwdriver and begin removing all eight clips. Just insert your screwdriver into the clip like this and then give it a turn. This should separate the middle from the outer housing just enough for you to pry the housing with your flathead. Now remove the clip and move on to the other seven. Like I said earlier, some of these will break. The heat that comes from the engine is really the main cause of these clips becoming so brittle. Combine that with different weather conditions and the fact that this car is a 2008, well, it's pretty easy to understand why they break. Luckily, new clips are so cheap, it just makes sense to replace them all. I found a unique push clip set that can be used on any car that I will link down below. Once those are all removed, go ahead and clean up the plastic cover so nothing falls off when you remove it. Now, in order to free the radiator shroud, you need to pull up on the back like this and then pull it towards the engine bay. Then you need to raise the hood release handle in order to maneuver the shroud up and out. Now you need to remove the screws that secure the bumper to the fender. As you can see, it's right behind your fender liner. Just pull back and then you can start unscrewing with your Phillips head screwdriver. Don't forget to remove this screw from each side. If you attempt to remove the bumper with these screws still in place, you could rip this part of your bumper that keeps it flush with your fender. Then you will have to buy a new bumper or else it'll never stay flush and will flap in the wind which can cause more body damage if it hits the fender the wrong way. Or even worse, if your tire catches it while you're doing 70 on the highway and rips the bumper clean off your car. So yeah, make sure you remove both of these screws. Once those are removed, you can remove the clips under your car. It may help to put your car up on ramps to give yourself some more room. At this camera angle, there are three clips two on the side and one that's a part of the front. I broke a ton of these clips at the bottom. So again, make sure you buy a set like this so you can keep your bumper securely in place while driving at high speeds. Once the two on the side are removed, let's move on to the front clips. I believe there were about six total. There's one. Now I'm going to move the camera to give you a better angle of the other five clips. As I'm removing this one, I want you to look at this channel. This is where the other clips are that you want to remove. I'll move the camera again and show you an even better view. Now there's the channel I was referring to, and these are the clips you want to remove. As you can see, I'm missing one of those clips here. Again, not an issue as I will be replacing all of them anyway. Once those clips inside that channel are removed, you can move on to the other side. Now, as you can see, the two clips on the driver's side are missing. They will be in the same two locations as the clips on the passenger side that we took off earlier. Right here and right here. Since those are missing, let's get that last clip removed so we can remove this bumper. This is the last clip. It's in the same area as the third clip we removed earlier, but this time on the driver's side and we are done with those old push clips. Now you need to separate the bumper from the bottom of the headlight housing. I like to start from the outside and work my way in. There are a few tabs that are built into the bumper that secure it in place. All you need to do is pull out on the bumper as straight as you can. You don't want to use a ton of force, but you do need to use some in order to break those clips free. Once you feel it is loose enough, you can move on to the other side. Same process. Start from the outside and move your way in. Now do not tug on the bumper just yet. There are two pins at the top of the headlight housing that help the bumper rest in place to prevent it from falling after you disconnect everything. Here is one spot. As you can see, there is a hole in this piece of the bumper that fits over the pin on the headlight housing. This is actually a great design that most cars do not implement into their bumpers. And here's the next hole and pin. All that's left is to walk up to the bumper, pull back slightly on those two locations that hold the bumper in place over the pins, and then lift the bumper away from the car. If you have fog lights, you will need to disconnect them before removing the whole bumper. With the bumper off, you can now change your headlights or worn out grill. We have recently done videos on both, and both are linked in the description below if you are interested. With that said, let's get the bumper back on. Just line up the bumper's two holes up top with those pins in the headlights and make sure the bumper can hang without falling. 
Now you can work on pushing those clips that are built into the bumper back into place. I wish I would have gotten a better camera angle for all of you, but essentially you need to line up these tabs with the slots under the headlight housing. Just make sure you are lined up perfectly before pushing them in. You don't want to be slightly off and then break those tabs trying to force them in. Once you get it lined up, you can begin pushing. Once that's done, you can do the same thing on the other side. Make sure the tabs are lined up and then just push in. Then you can grab your screw and screw it back in behind the fender liner. Now you can do the same for the other side. Oh, and make sure you push the fender liner back into place. You don't want it to stick out too far because your wheel could grab it while you are driving and rip it out of place. Let's get back under the car and get those push clips installed. Since we are clipping two plastic pieces together, you will need to line up both holes before pushing the clip in. You may need to move the plastic shields around a little bit to get them lined up perfectly, just like that. Now, I felt around back here and couldn't find the second piece that should connect to this hole. I'm going to assume it was broken off at some point and that may be why there's a rip in the bumper right here. The original clip's probably broke off and then part of the splash shield must have been ripped off by the tire while driving. Let's just move on. Now if you push one in and it doesn't grab the second splash shield, you will need to remove the clip and then try again. Mm. And sometimes you may need to try for a third time. There we go. Now just keep moving along. These next four, you just need to feel the clip connect the two shields together because as you can see, you really can't get your hand behind it to line it up. This one you can because of the cutout, but the next two, you just need to feel it go through both splash shields and you will be able to tell by looking at it. The splash shield shouldn't sag down when you have it connected correctly. See the difference? If you have those clips in correctly, it will hold the splash shields in place just like this. Now do the same for the rest of the clip and then we can move on. Once that's done, we can get off the ground and move on to the upper radiator shroud. So grab the cover and make sure the part facing the front of the car is tilted down. Then lift up on the hood release latch and feed it through the hole in the cover. Now you want to make sure this part of the cover goes underneath the top part of the grill just like this. And also make sure these two bump stops for the hood come through the correct holes in the cover. Once the cover is in place, go ahead and start putting your push clips back in. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be installing all new clips since quite a few of them broke due to their age. If you plan on doing the same with a kit like this, start with the clip that is bigger than the older clips. If it doesn't push in, then try the next size down. Keep trying until you find the clip that fits perfectly. That one worked. Once I get a good camera angle, I'll show you how these clips work. All right, so check this out. You wanna keep the top part of the clip from pushing in before you get the base in place, just like that. Now you can push the top part of the clip in and that locks it into the cover. Let's watch that one more time. Push the base into the hole 
then push the top in to lock the clip. Pretty simple, right? Do this for the rest of the clips and you are done. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.